Live, it's the Redskins Post Game Show with Steve Buckhands in Los Angeles with game highlights and player interviews, along with Gus Johnson in Washington with other sports scores and highlights. Welcome back to the L.A. Coliseum with the Redskins victorious in their first preseason game of the year. Now with a record of 1-3, and three, a winner over the L.A. Raiders 27-23. And with me is a very happy young man, Ricky Irvins, who carried the ball eight times, picked up 54 yards, and uh, just had a good overall performance in front of a lot of folks in almost your hometown. You're from Pasadena, but it's nice to play in front of the home, home folk, isn't it? Well, it feels good uh, you know, to go out here and uh, get a victory for one. Uh, we've uh, been 0-3 for a while, and it feels good to come out here and you know, do some good, but uh, especially play in front of my fans and my family, so it really feels good. But the smog doesn't feel good, does it? <laughs> Not at all. And whenever you come out here, you have to get adjusted to the smog, and I don't think no one can. And if you drink a lot of water and come out here and run, your chest will start hurting, and that's what happened to me. I got tired and the small got to me. And you actually got a break because last week it was about 105 degrees out here and there's a breeze blowing right now. Right. It's not as bad as it could have been. That's what my mom told me. She told me uh, last week it was about 95 to 100 and I thought it was going to be uh, about 100 degrees out here, but we, uh, fortunately, it was kind of 80, 80 degrees and we uh, did pretty good. You looked great when you carried the ball. I mean, you looked like you had the form of last year and we've got a play that really was indicative of your of your performance this afternoon. Take a look at that. Tell me uh, what you did on this run. You did a lot of things. Uh, this right here, I, I do believe it was a screen set up to me. Uh, marked through it perfectly. I uh, read my block and just started, you know, looking for open field and bounced off a couple uh, defenders and uh, finally got tackled. And this right here, I was tired, though. <laughs> Unbelievably tired. Well, Riggins said afterwards that uh, he knew you had to be tired. I mean, that takes a lot out of you when you have to do that second and third effort, doesn't it? Uh, it does. You know, you don't you kind of lose your stride, lose your momentum, and you got to restart again. Anytime you do that, you don't you'd be tired. But, uh, I was fortunate enough to go out there and just do, you know, execute and just, you know, get, get the offense going. This was a weird game, Ricky, because in the first half, the Redskin offense rarely had the football. I mean, everybody that scored was either off of interceptions or a special teams play by Brian Mitchell. So really, you didn't get a chance to play that much, and hence Mark Rippon came out and played again in the third quarter. But I think there were some positive things. I think for the first time in four games, more positive things offensively uh, than this team has seen in a long time, taking nothing away from Kerry Conklin, who in the previous games played very well. But I think we owe that to uh, uh, training camp this past week. Uh, we went out there, we practiced hard, and we knew all the things we had to do. We corrected mistakes we did at London, came out here, and just try to get things going, try to establish the run, get the passing going. And unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to go out and have any players in the first half. But the special teams and the defense did really good, and they, uh, they got the points going for it. You're working right now without Jim Lachey blocking for you, without Daryl Green on the other side of the ball. You got Rippin back, and of course, Desmond Howard continues to be a holdout. But you've got the regular season starting two weeks from Monday night in Dallas, and you know they're going to be fired up. How is this team feeling as you gear toward the regular season? Well, I think this victory right here is going to serve uh, a purpose. Uh, we came out here and we won the game. Now that's going to hopefully uh, serve as a momentum uh, going into uh, next week's game. We can go in there and try to win that game. If not, then uh, just work on the uh, mistakes and get ready for a Dallas game. Hopefully, Jim Shea and Joe Green will be back by then. Well, you had a terrific uh, outing, and we appreciate you stopping by, and uh, best of luck with your family here after the game. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Ricky Irvins, who had 54 yards and a terrific performance in today's game as the Redskins finally win one, their first of the preseason, beating the L.A. Raiders 27-23. to Okay, Ricky, thank you, and we will continue with our postgame activities from Los Angeles and the L.A. Coliseum right after this. Today's Redskins post-game show is brought to you in part by Texaco, official sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team, and by Nestle Ice Tea. It's in his head, his heart, in every muscle, the energy to go further. Texaco System 3 gasolines put this kind of energy to work for you on the road. System 3 reduces deposits and cleans your engine in all octane grades to help put the heart and muscle back into older cars and keep new cars running like him. Five of America's top ten best-selling vehicles are Ford. Some people are buying Ford because they want comfort. Some want to follow their own path. Some folks are looking for good, reliable transportation, while others have to carry big loads or not-so-big loads. Of course, some people just want to save money. So during their leadership clearance sale, your Ford dealers are offering $1,000 cash back on a new Taurus, which makes a loaded Taurus L just $14,666. And that's before you make your best deal. Remember, if you didn't get a Ford, you didn't get a deal. 
When you said you wanted Roy Rogers with its incredible fried chicken to come back, we listened. When you said you wanted that great taste in a chicken filet sandwich, we listened. When you said you wanted a grilled chicken sandwich with whole breast meat, we listened. And when you said you wanted a new chicken club salad, we listened. That's what's made Roy Rogers your favorite chicken. And whatever it takes to stay there, rest assured, America, we hear you. Flying? This is how to fly. It's a nice drive, but this is how you fly. Red rock flying, this is flying. This is how to fly. They call that flying wrong. Northwest is flying. Fly northwest across the Pacific to Australia and more cities in Asia than any U.S. airline. L.A. Coliseum, Los Angeles, California. The Redskins victorious in preseason game number four, winning here this afternoon 27 to 23 in a wild matchup that featured back-to-back -back interception returns for touchdowns by the Redskins' Martin Mayhew and a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Brian Mitchell. Not bad for a few plays in the first half. The Redskins were up at the half. They win it 27 to 23. We'll have all those highlights for you, plus live guests as we continue with our post-game activities here on the Channel 5 report. We also want to make mention that if you missed any of the action from tonight's game, this afternoon's game, you can see it again in its entirety coming up at 8 o'clock your time back here in Washington at Channel 5 from 8 to 11. So you'll be able to see the game once again at 8 o'clock in its entirety. And we will return to the L.A. Coliseum with our halftime, with our post-game guests, rather. But first, let's throw it back to our studios in Washington and Gus Johnson with the rest of the sports news of the day. Gus? Okay, Buck, we'll see you in a little bit. Elsewhere in the NFL, Warren Moon threw two touchdown passes and Houston rose by New Orleans 33-3. Played it at the Superdome where Warren Moon took some time to sign a few autographs for his fans in New Orleans today. Houston's defense set the tone early. First quarter, Bobby Bear throws over the middle to Quinn Early who just gets leveled by safety Bubba McDowell. It got worse for the Saints. Still in the first. Moon drops back and finds a wide open Haywood Jeffries racing down the sideline. A 32-yard touchdown pass gave the Oilers a 13-0 lead, and it wouldn't end there. Moon and Jeffrey took up again. Second quarter from inside the five. Moon finds Jeffries in the end zone. A three-yard TD pass put the Oilers up 20-3. It, it wasn't only a tough day for the Saints, but also for the referees as well. Watch this. Center of your screen, quarterback Mike Buck of the Saints fires over the middle and just nails Empire Handy Amstitch right in the face. Little ice and handy, he's okay. Third quarter, Cody Carlson, the quarterback for the Oilers, finds his receiver, Manny Hazard, from 15 yards out. Oilers going to route the Saints, 33-3. Major League Baseball, Orioles game just getting underway at Camden Yards. They're trying to make it two in a row against the Oakland A's. Meanwhile, Tom Brunanski came through in the clutch for Boston. The Red Sox beat Seattle in eight. We're off to Fenway Park, where Boston skipper Butch Hobson Gets a few uh, pointers from the old Zimmer himself, Don Zimmer. And the Sox need it. Top second. Jay Buhner gets his pitch. Drills and one to deep left. Solo shot. It's all tied up in one. On the ball, up but the Sox rally. Same inning. Billy Hatcher comes to the plate. Delivers a scorch in left field. Bangs it off the wall, and here comes two runs. Hatcher ends up with a double, and the Sox lead 3-2. Then in the eighth, game tied at eight. Tom Brunaski earns his paycheck. Bang. Deep drop. High and deep. Into left field. Red Sox go on to win it in eight. Meanwhile, plenty of room in Cleveland to watch a ball game. Catch a tan, too. Indians hosting Texas. Top of the fifth. Jack Armstrong had the heater working this afternoon. Blows it by Yvonne Rodriguez. See you later. Armstrong threw a no-hitter through the first five innings. Then in the sixth, Paul Sorrento drives one to left. Opposite field Tater off Bobby Witt. His 16th. Three to one try. Sorrento's not finished. In the seventh, comes up to the base hit to right field. Thomas Howard scores. Jack Armstrong picks up his fifth win of the season, and Cleveland beats Texas 6 1. In the National League, Barry Bonds, Jay Bell, and Mike Lavalier each hit two, home, two, uh, two run homers. Doug Drabeck picks up his 10th win of the season. Pittsburgh beats San Francisco 9-2.
These two clubs playing home run derby this afternoon. Everybody jumping out of the yard. Will Clark bangs his 14th home run of the season off Doug Drabeck. Giants lead it one to nothing. But here come the Bucks. First, it's Mike Lavalier. Then Jay Bell. And finally, Barry Bonds follows suit. Two run shot over the right field wall. Pittsburgh goes on to win this one, nine to two. Golf action, Greg Norman gained a place among the leaders in the second round of the International Golf Tournament, one of the only tournaments in the country where the highest score determines the winner. Played it in Castle Rock, Colorado. We're on 17, Greg Norman finds his putting stroke from the fringe, reads the left to right break perfectly, and nails it down for birdie. Norman goes to plus 17. Then on seven, then on 11, Kurt Triplett also on the fringe. Good looking chip here. Kurt Triplett. He babies it a little bit too much though. Otherwise it would be perfect. Go straight for the hole. Almost goes in, but just a little short. But on 12, Steve Elkington had it all working. Putting for birdie and Elkington finds the bottom of the hole. Final round action tomorrow. Tennis action, Yvonne Lindell put off the upset of the day at the Volvo International. Lindell beat third-seeded Michael Chang, 6-3-7-6, to advance to the semifinals. Played it in New Haven, Connecticut, where Lindell giving us his best John McEnroe impersonation, folks. Today, he's just all over everybody. Second set, Lindell in the near court and smokes one down the line, but this one is out, and Lindell can't believe it. Goes over to the chair, gives the umpire an ear for it. What are you talking about, he said. That was in. Well, it was out. Michael Chang goes up 5-4, but Lindell doesn't sweat it. Still in the second set. Serves and comes up with the cross-court winner. Now he's pumped up and ready to put this one away. On match point, Lindell in the far court. Takes his time. Makes his move. Chang can't answer the call. Avon Lindell goes on to be third-seeded Michael Chang, 6-3-7-6 to advance to the semifinals. Horse racing, Saratoga Springs, New York, the place to be today, where a competitive race turned into a one-horse show. Here's the stretch call. Race track. here comes Hold Old Blue, and down the stretch they come, a furlong to the finish. On the front end, Thunder Rumble draws away by three, it's Thunder Rumble in front, and Devil is due in second, it's Thunder Rumble with Harapuk Hawley. Thunder Rumble, the New York Red who took the Jim Dandy, now Thunder Rumble wins the Travers, Thunder Rumble takes the Travers Stakes by four and a half lengths. Devil is due finishes second, and Hammer's Horse Dance Floor wound up third. Now let's go back out to Los Angeles, where Steve Buckhans is live with a Redskin or with the guest. Steve? And with me is head coach Joe Gibbs, who the team gets their first victory. I saw a lot of positive things. I'm sure you're going to see some negative things, too. But it was a weird game, coach, because you didn't have the ball hardly in the first half, and you had to go with your starters in the second half. Yeah, it was really different from that standpoint. I think that, uh, hey, and I, you know, I always want to enjoy a win. It's been a long time since it seemed like we had one. We had three big losses, and then to get one today, a win. But I tell you, I got a feeling when I watched the film, I'm not going to like what I saw. Why do you I, had the, I had the feeling from where I was on the sideline, they were knocking us back. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a bad sign, and a little bit both ways. I'm talking about defense and offense, the same thing. And uh, we had three big plays. These give you scores. And, hey, that's not going to happen very often. And uh, so, I mean, like I said, I want to enjoy this. I didn't jump anybody or anything. But I think when we watch this film, hopefully we, we got we to start learning some lessons here. And I think we had a lot of them on this film. On the plus side, when I think offensively of what you did, um, Mark Rippon looked pretty sharp. And Ricky Irvin's looks like where he left off last year. Yeah, I'd say Ricky. Uh, well, I tell you, Ricky looked good to me. And I think Mark, we let him throw a little bit starting the second half and try to get him a few throws in there. And I think he looked pretty good. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of guys probably, you know, did a good job for us. But I'm just saying, overall as a team, you're looking from a team standpoint. And I don't know. I had the feeling that they were, you know, like I said, that we're we're getting knocked back off the ball and. Uh, both ways and uh, that's a bad feeling take a look at the final stats and you'll be able to compare a few things here offensively you only came up with 64 yards passing and rushing 88 yards and, and look at the Raiders they had 243 yards passing 135 yards so Marinovich uh, really came in and did a nice job and Schrader you know I, I commented in the first half he didn't he wasn't that off he just made a couple of mistakes when he threw in the, and got the Mayhew interceptions he didn't look that bad to me but Marinovich can wing the football yeah, I, I said the same thing. I tell you, I would uh, probably, 
take real heart in the fact that, hey, they just made a couple of mistakes there, and actually were two tough reads. He got caught and trapped on a couple of things. I think one time the corner looked like he was going to back away, and he's going to throw a quick out, and he jumped it uh, in the coverage we had. And the other one, it was trying to get again to a quick out, and the safety came underneath and got it. Uh, I, I think uh, I think the young guy looks good. Uh, they look to me like they're going to be strong. I mean, they, they're running backs. We yeah, made a lot of misses <laughs> in there, and they looked awful good to me. Yeah. Dickerson looked good. Bell looked good when he carried the football. All right, offensive line. Uh, I know Hannafin made some some changes, and you're trying to get set because two weeks from Monday you play Dallas. Uh, what do you think the offensive line did uh, for your team in the first half, anyway, when Rippon was in? Well, I think it was. Uh, it seemed like pass protection for both teams were pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I'd say uh, I'm anxious to see it. I think you get a film and study it up close. Best way to really analyze it, but. You know, I think we had to make some changes. I think those guys played quite a bit and hopefully did a good job. I think they did. I know you had a good trip to London. Right away you came out here. Are you glad all that traveling is over for now? You got to get back to D.C. and then you're home for a little while? Yeah, I don't think we're tired, though. We're not tired. We, we um, I think we had good rest in there and good work. I think we just, uh, uh, so I really got no complaints about it. Although I'll say this, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing an RFK crowd again. I'll tell you that, man. It's, I want to see somebody pulling for us up close. Up close in the stadium, pulling for us. That's what we got there. Up close and personal. Well, this is yeah. our last broadcast uh, for the preseason, and, and it may be our last opportunity to talk with you live for a while. Aren't you going to say anything to get me mad or anything like you did last year? <laughs> Should I? <laughs> well, nobody picked you first this year anyway. We know that, right? <laughs> That's right. I think fewer people picked us first this year than last year. <laughs> uh, right now, I'd say they're right, but we'll see what happens there. Well, no predictions this year, but... Okay. But how do you feel two weeks away, seriously? I know you're always concerned, and, and maybe you have some, some you know, rightful concerns at this point. But, you know, last year you went one and three, and everybody was concerned, and it just seemed like the veterans on this team, they don't care that much about preseason, but when the thing was on the line, they came to play and they were focused. Now, I don't know if that'll happen this year or not, uh, but how do you feel about it going two weeks away now? I think you're, you have a good assessment. I think uh, we didn't play good last year. I would say we're not red hot right now, that's for sure. And uh, but I think again, it will be how the how the veterans treat this, the attitude the players have. Uh, do we really go after things? And is there close knit chemistry? Is that going to develop this year? I, I don't think you ever know. In football, uh, you you never get to capture uh, something from last year unless you work hard at it this year. Mm -hmm. I think we have worked hard, but I don't know what the attitude is going to be. And I think that. You know, I think that's going to really determine it. You know, what kind of uh, chemistry we develop. Normally, it's something big happens early in your season, gets you going one way or the other. And then the other thing we talked about, possible distractions or things that uh, uh, stray from the norm. And this year, you, you've got a few of them. I mean, you've got the holdouts. You've got shuffling on the line. Uh, you had the long trip. You go back to a new training facility. It's a lot of things that just aren't normal right now. Yeah, we've. Uh, I think the new facility is beautiful. Hopefully, we'll get in there and get squared away. That one day in there was good for us. Um, uh, but I think our, you know, like I said, I don't think we have any excuses on any of that. I think it's just a matter of us getting back there, spend a good week, getting ready to play a real good, for real preseason game at home, play it hard, and then uh, turn around and hey, we're gonna <laughs> throw it up in the air and see what happens. I mean, it's uh, it's exciting. I know our fans probably got to be excited to watch all the good football that's going to be out there. I, I'm not really excited right now. I'm kind of, you know, I got all the normal feelings you think a coach would have. I'm a little apprehensive and uh, feel like you're not ready and all those things. And I just start getting nervous right about now. Well, I think you'll be pretty pumped up two weeks from Monday night in Dallas. Thanks for stopping by, Thanks, Coach. Steve. Sure. All right. Join me with you. Okay, me too. Good luck. Coach Joe Gibbs, the Redskins victorious in their fourth preseason game of the year for the first time. The final was 27-23 Redskins over the Raiders, and we'll continue with our postgame activities live from Los Angeles right after this. This Nissan Maxima is luxurious, but that's not the only reason to buy one. Some facts, then. In a recent comparison with Camry and Taurus, the editors of Car and Driver named Maxima SE the overall winner. And now a Maxima GXE comes with $2,200 worth of options at no charge, making it an excellent value. Especially equipped Maxima GXE. Only for a limited time, only at your Washington and Baltimore area Nissan dealer. It's new. And it's extraordinary with a taste you'd never imagine possible. It's clear and it's clean, and you'll know it the moment it touches your lips. It's new Nest Tea Iced Tea. It's the way iced tea was supposed to taste, but never did. 
Until now. Nest tea. Taste the plunge. One time I was on the Chafala and I hooked me a big, big catfish. He put up such a fight, he straightened out the bend in the river. You should have seen that. Not all fish stories are so unbelievable. Like Chesapeake Bay Seafood Houses, 16 different all-you-can-eat entrees. And kids under six eat for just 50 cents. Honest, Chesapeake Bay Seafood House, the best fish story from the bay. He was so big, we needed a flatbed truck just to get him home. That's right. your National Capital Jeep and Eagle dealers. Back live at the L.A. Coliseum, the Redskins beat the Raiders 27-23. Steve Buckhantz with you as our postgame activities continue from Los Angeles. And our Nestle player of the game this afternoon, who else? Martin Mayhew, who incredibly had back-to-back -back interceptions for touchdowns in the first quarter of this football game to put the Skins out on top 14 to nothing. This is interception number one off a Jay Schrader pass. Schrader throws, and Mayhew is right there. A little miscommunication with the wide receiver, it appeared. Mayhew returns at 33 yards, and with uh, less than a minute to go in the first quarter, the Redskins were up 7 to nothing. Then on the very first play after the kickoff, Schrader again. This time goes left side, intended for Mervin Fernandez, and Mayhew again with a leaping grab, steps in front, picks it off, returns at 25 yards. At that point, Schrader had thrown eight passes, Five of them were complete to Raiders, three of them to Redskins, two of them for interceptions. The Skins led 14 to nothing with a minute 43 to play in the first quarter. Then the Raiders come back, march downfield off the running of Eric Dickerson, who had 79 yards up to that point. This is Nick Bell who scores, and with 10-20 to play in quarter number two, the lead was cut to 7, 14 to 7. But on the ensuing kickoff, Brian Mitchell fields the ball at his own three-yard line, and boy, shades of last year and hopefully shades of things to come as Mitchell cuts in and out up the field and then it's a foot race and he outraces everybody 97 yards as the Redskins go on top 21 to 7 with 10 minutes, 3 seconds to go in quarter number 2, a 97-yard kickoff return by Brian Mitchell. At that point, the Redskins still did not have a single yard total offense while the Raiders had 156, but the Skins were on top 21 to 7. Then in the third quarter, Chip Lomiller came out, kicked a 22-yard field goal, and with 8.13 to go in the third, the Skins led 24-7. But the Raiders came in with Todd Marinovich, marched it down, third and goal at the one. Marcus Allen scores left side. Marinovich was 4-4 four of four for 55 yards on the drive. They went eight plays, 65 yards, and cut the lead to 24-14 with 3.18 to go third quarter. Then Marinovich again, first and 10 at the Redskin 25, goes left side and wide open is the six-year veteran from the University of Tennessee, Sam Grady, and the lead was cut to just three at 24-21 with a minute three to play in quarter number three. But Chip Lowmiller came in. Lowmiller on the day who was two of four, he missed from uh, 48 and also 54 yards, connected on one from 48 yards and put the skins up 27-21 with 11-27 to go in the fourth quarter. And then, towards the end of the game, with just 14 seconds left, the Redskins backed up into their own end zone. A smart move and the smart way out as Kelly Goodburn runs around to eat up some clock and then takes a two-point safety. They punted away to the Raiders. The Raiders came back with a Hail Mary. It was not, com not successful. And the Redskins win it 27-23. to When we return, a final comment. John Riggins joins us. 27-23 the final, and we'll be back to L.A. right after this. Hello, David. It's me. How are you? How's work? Listen, are you eating? Oh, no time, no money? Well, no excuses, because now you can get a regular hamburger, small fries, and a small soft drink at McDonald's for only $1.79. Look at your mother when I'm talking to you. A nice, hot, all-American meal for only $1.79. Now, eat, and don't cause me any more grief.
simple arithmetic can tell you a lot about Toyota trucks. Like right now, extra value options can add up to big savings for you. On this or this. But hurry before your dealer is minus the one you want. The road is the ultimate test. It demands the will, the determination, the energy to go further. At Texaco, you'll find that energy in System 3 gasolines for improved performance in all octane grades. It's not just in our products. It's also in our services. Everywhere you go. At Texaco, we meet the challenge of the road and then go even further. With just one phone call to Ryder, you can rent one of our new trucks. But with automatic transmission, power steering, a fuel-injected engine, and an extremely roomy interior. Think of it as a luxury car with a very large trunk. Ryder, we're there when you need us. Today's Redskin postgame show has been brought to you in part by Texaco, official sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team, and by Nest Tea Ice Tea. In Los Angeles, the Redskins victorious 27-23, and I'm joined by John Riggins. And, John, I think of the four preseason games so far this year, we saw maybe the most impressive performance by the Redskins in this one. We did, but I'll tell you, it was a strange game, I thought, Steve. I mean, the first half, you have a, a team, of, I'm thinking about the Redskins' offense, that hardly got on the field. Um, I don't know what to really, how to evaluate this, and I think uh, Coach Gibbs is just as confused. I know the great thing about it is they have the chance to go back in and look at the game films, but for somebody to sit here and watch this game and not have the advantage of, of being able to look at play after play and just see who did what, um, I don't know. I, I agree with you in the sense that the, that the Redskins did get a win. I think that, you know, that's good. It's not necessarily of, of the utmost importance. But their, their defense played well, I thought. They gave up a few more yards than they normally do, and they, they gave up some yards on the ground, but that was a year ago they did the same thing. Uh, the, the one bright spot, I thought, the offensive line did a good job of drive blocking. I thought they'd blocked well for the run. They did adequate on the pass, but it, I, once again, I don't think the offense was out there enough, and I, did, I didn't get the feeling of a real performance when I say where you know they ran enough plays to, to be able to make a, an evaluation. Once again, we enjoyed doing the broadcast with you, and congratulations on the Hall of Fame. Thanks, Steve. Okay, that's John Riggins, and for John, and Dick Stockton, and Bobby Mitchell, and Gus Johnson, Steve Buckhand saying so long from the L.A. Coliseum. Once again, our final score, the Redskins 27, the Raiders 23. We'll see you tomorrow night for Sports Extra.